Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Mountain Blade Manlord. Today we're going to be looking at the Volandian Empire and formations and tactics to use against them. Now the Volandians have a very heavy focus on defensive ability so their main force is con consists of crossbowmen um, and billmen so they're essentially pikemen. So they're very very good um, for defensive formations like sieges, defending castles and towns but they're not very good in the field. Now obviously depending on the force you're going against, if you pick a very large um, party with a leader who's got very good leadership ability, stewardship ability, then you're going to be probably facing some pretty heavy cavalry. Um, it's quite rare, I've found I've fought a lot of battles against a lot of different Volandian lords and their cavalry usually seems to consist around the same number. If they have a very high cavalry force, um, they have the cavalry is very very good, very strong. Um, but usually they just have a huge force of infantry and archers unlike some other faction types. Their main focus when they come into battle is infantry and archers. Now as you can see in the clip that's playing, um, we did not have such good luck against them. We got absolutely swarms. I think we had 100 against 500 of them um, and our tactics just fell straight through. Uh, we did not have the men we needed. But this is not what we're going to be showing. And we're going to be showing some better formations, better tactics to use after this one. Um, but essentially, yeah, like I said, so the Volandian forces, Volandian troops, they're very, very good to use in defensive sieges. Um, crossbowmen are very good against um, actually assaulting castles and towns. They've got very, very high range and very, very strong damage. So they are good troops, but ultimately um, in the field, they're not that great. Uh, unless you're leading them really but the billmen are the main ones that you want to watch out for so let's have a walk through our tactics here and what we're going to do so what we want to do first is we want to get our infantry up and um, forward now what we want to do is we want to split our forces in two um, I made a circle there by accident what I want to do is I want to get one unit in front and one unit behind so I want a small force either I want a shield wall in front or I want a small circle in front and then what I want to form is a shield wall line behind that. Now, if I had, if I was fortunate enough or lucky enough that I built up a force that consisted of half shielded infantry and half unshielded infantry, so for example, spearmen, like billmen, like the Ufandians have, for example, then what I could use is put them behind um, this shielded formation. So I could have my shield wall or circle in the front, taking the archer fire and having the enemy force wrap around them um, and essentially have those infantry absorb the enemy and all their firepower and then my billmen or unshielded infantry that would be behind they would then hold that line so if I knew that I was going to lose the forward inf um, formation I would have a steady heavy infantry force behind ready to take on the wounded soldiers coming their way but what the best thing we could use them for is to then wrap around our already formed circle or shield wall and hit the flanks of the enemy and really start to deal some damage. Um, so again, I'm just experimenting with some other formations, getting into loose, seeing how it kind of works. But um, I will be putting them into a circle in a moment. There we go. So we're going to put them in a circle right in front of us there, and then we're going to have our boys behind form a shield wall. So either way, all of our men are going to be absorbing some firepower. Now we split these forces up because we want our circle to be nice and small, um, and we want it to be pretty much touching this line of infantry. Now also what I didn't mention is I split up my archers, so I have one archer group of half the men, so maybe 20-30 men on the right flank, um, but quite far out on the right flank. So they're not just behind my infantry, but they're really far on the right, in the woods here. Um, and this exact same on the left as well. So we've got two archers angled nicely um, towards the enemy, creating kind of, if you looked at it from a distance, we'd have a V. So we'd have a circle, a line and then a V of archers behind and we've got all of our cavalry at the dead flank. Now the best thing you could possibly do is have your horse archers far on the right because as soon as you send them into a charge they like to go to the right. Um, cavalry generally just stick them to the flanks because like I said they can do the same job as our line infantry here. Now once the enemy starts to push into the circle we can have our cavalry push forward. Now if you've got the time, if you've got the numbers and you're confident your men can hold their own um, then lead the cavalry formation around take them behind the enemy and then hit them in the flanks with your horses as you can see we're taking some losses but we're starting to dish them out again now it's starting to look a lot more green and we're starting to deal a lot more damage against our enemy 
Now, a lot of that damage was coming from our archers because our archers are on the flanks. And we moved them as well. So once the enemy had been absorbed into our infantry formations, we decided to move our archers. We made them go more into the flank because we want to hit more of their backsides. You know, hitting them just in the sides is not enough. We really want to pound them from the rear. So we want to move our archers around. If we can, let's get them exactly behind them. Let's cut off their retreat and annihilate them. But as you can see, lost a few infantry. There's a few green bodies there on the floor. But we absolutely destroyed their enemy infantry. Because our archers did pretty much all of the work once again. And this is just another tactic. Um, so we didn't have too many infantry. We had a heavy force of archers. Cavalry, we had very small amounts of. Unfortunately, we were lacking quite massively in our mounted formations. Um, so we've used our archers and our infantry. We were outnumbered yet again. As you can see from the top bar, at the start of the battle, they did overpower us. They were doing better than us. But as you can see here at the end, we have taken a tiny chunk of losses compared to we pretty much wiped out their entire force. Um, now, I would say for this battle, the enemy was probably a mid to high tier. So not the leader, um, not a leading clan, but one of the sort of mid to high tier clan. So it was still a formidable enemy, um, but not quite enough to be a major, major threat. Um, yeah, we've managed to wipe them out, as you can see, 93 dead of theirs, 118 wounded. We lost 17 men in total. Um, all of that, I can guarantee you, was from the infantry. Now, if the enemy has a higher focus on cavalry, then your archer flanks need to be a little bit more protected. So what you might want to do is reinforce them and use your cavalry and your horse archers to back them up. But I stress enough, do not push your archers too far forward because then your enemy infantry will engage them. You want to keep your infantry, and um, this is the best thing about the circle and the um, line infantry as well, is that will draw the enemy more towards you because there'll be a bigger target. As a circle, if the enemy's pulling a wide formation and charging that way, then they might not go straight into the infantry. They might hit your archers to the flank. But having that line behind them means that you're also taking up a lot of room. So they're finding themselves drawn more into that formation. And they're entering that bottleneck where you can start to move your archers around the flanks and deal a lot of damage. But the main part of this tactic is to get your archers on either side. Make sure you split that unit up. Don't just have one group, but have two. Because that way, if one fails, you still have the other side hailing arrows against the enemy. Um, so either way, it does work. And obviously, use your mounted, use your cavalry. Let them be distractions. Keep the enemy away. Unless you have a heavy focus on cavalry, and you can use them a lot better, make them take the enemy cavalry away. Get them out of the fight. Move them away from you. With the Vlandians, their main force is going to be the infantry. That's what you want to get rid of. That's what you want to deal with. Um, so yeah, I hope this has helped, guys. If you've got any tactics yourselves, any strategies, please let me know down in the comments below. This is just one idea. There's obviously a lot of other ways to deal with this. I'm just trying to cover what the main sort of things that I would use against the Vlandians. Um, and obviously, I'm going to cover all the other cultures as well. If there's anything different you want to see, if there's any more, if you want me to cover more different tactics against Vlandians or anything like that, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, make sure to go ahead and join me on Discord and message me on there as well. Um, if you've got any you know, opinions, tips, feedback, absolutely anything at all, make sure to let me know. Please, I'd really appreciate it and it really just supports the channel massively. Um, make sure to subscribe as well, um, as well if you haven't already, it just supports the channel. And um, you know, just keep you up to date with all the content as well. Uh, otherwise guys i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope it's helped please let me know if it has helped um you know, i don't have to drop a like but make sure you drop a comment at least um, and just let me know what you thought otherwise guys i'll see you in the next episode i hope you've enjoyed it have a good one goodbye